Welcome to Getting Started with Chef Workstation. I'm Nick Reichart, and whether you're new to Chef or an experienced Chef developer, this video will show you how you can get started quicker than ever in automating the configuration of your estate. Before we can dig in, however, it's important to start with, what is Chef Workstation? Put simply, Chef Workstation is a single package you can install on your local system that collects a variety of tools you can use to get started with InSpec and Chef. These include tools for ad hoc execution of security scans and configuration tasks, as well as a library of development tools you can use to formalize the testing and promotion of your Chef policy. If you're already using the Chef Development Kit, or Chef DK, all of the tools you've become accustomed to, like Test Kitchen and Cook Style, are available in Chef Workstation. All future development on those tools will be made available as well. So once you've installed Chef Workstation, you don't need to install anything else to get rolling with Chef. This video will focus on Chef Run, a utility that lets you run ad hoc configuration tasks on any system you can access over SSH or WinRM. With that, let's dive in and get started automating. To get started, we'll first need to download Chef Workstation, which can be found at chef.sh. The download link will auto-detect your running operating system and download the appropriate installation package. From this same site, we can go to the Chef Workstation docs and view the Getting Started guide to kick things off. The full list of Chef Workstation packages can also be found on downloads.chef.io, where we can specify the specific OS installer we'd like to download. Chef provides a robust library of built-in resources that allow us to define common configuration tasks, including but not limited to tasks like installing or uninstalling software, creating files and directories, adding and removing users, as well as adding and removing registry keys on Windows systems. As an example, let's take a look at a very common configuration task, installing the Network Time Protocol, or NTP. This package is responsible for ensuring that all of our server's clocks are kept in sync. With each Chef resource, we have a type, in this case package, a name, the package we'd like to install, or NTP, and an action, install. In this case, Chef will look at our system and ensure that NTP is installed if it isn't already present, or simply take no action if NTP is already available. Because each resource also has a default action, and in the case of package, that action is install, we can further simplify this and simply represent it as package NTP, which is functionally equivalent. With Chef Workstation installed, we can see these resources in action quickly using a tool called Chef Run. Chef Run allows us to execute these resources directly from our command line, in this case, providing a host that we'd like to configure, a resource type and name, and optionally a resource action if we're not using the default, and then an identity file or password we'd like to use to authenticate. In my case, I'll be connecting to a system called RHEL1 and executing the package resource to install NTP. Now let's take a look at Chef Run in action. When I execute my command, it'll first generate a policy file which describes how to apply my configuration on my remote system. Chef Run will then ensure that the Chef Client installer is uploaded and installed on my target node, and then it will apply the package resource we've specified, finally showing that our machine has successfully converged. We can validate our work by SSHing in and using the RPM utility to verify that NTP is indeed installed. For another Chef resource example, let's take a look at another common configuration task, creating a message of the day to be displayed every time a user logs into one of our systems. The Chef file resource allows us to create the file etcmotd where we can set this message. The file resource, like the package resource, has a default action, in this case create, and we're also providing a content parameter where we can define, you guessed it, what content that file should have when it's created. Now we can apply this much the same way we did our NTP example, by creating a Chef Run task and giving it the file resource instead of the package resource. However, as we add more and more resources, 
executing them individually this way can become cumbersome very quickly. To assist with this, we can create a chef recipe, which allows us to define an ordered list of resources to be executed all at once. We can run these with Chef Run in much the same way. Instead of defining the resource we wish to execute, we can point it at a recipe file, in this case, myrecipe.rb. Back in my terminal, I've created a recipe with this same content. We can now execute it with Chef Run and watch as Chef Run applies it just as it applied our single resource execution earlier, this time applying my recipe. Once our run completes, we can validate that it performed as expected by SSHing in and seeing whether or not our message of the day shows up. Once I log in, indeed, welcome to RHEL1. Now that we have our recipe, we can continue to add resources to perform more and more complex tasks with each execution of Chef Run. However, we still have one problem. Our recipe will work well enough, provided our host has the name RHEL1. Instead of hard coding this value, Chef allows us to reference information about the host, like its host name, which we can use instead, allowing this recipe to be used on any host we wish to configure. Previously, we saw how we can use Chef Run to configure a single node, but we can also run Chef on multiple nodes in parallel. With this notation, Chef Run will execute on RHEL 1 through 4. On 1, the Chef client has already been installed, and it skips directly to applying our recipe. On the remaining machines, it installs Chef client and runs the same policy. When all is complete, we can confirm that we see the behavior we expect on each individual node. After our recipe is applied to all four nodes, we can SSH into a machine, say, RHEL3, to make sure we get the appropriate message of the day. And indeed, once again we see, welcome to RHEL3. Finally, Users of Chef Automate might like to see their Chef Run data show up in the Client Runs view within Automate. We can accomplish this first by going into the Admin tab and creating a new API token. I'll call mine Workstation. We can then copy this token for use in our Chef Workstation config. When you install Chef Workstation, it creates a config file located in the .chef workstation directory relative to your home directory. Into this, I've added the data collector section, which allows me to provide a URL and the token we copied in our previous step to allow Chef Run to communicate with Chef Automate. Now, when we execute Chef Run against our hosts, the results will show up within our Automate dashboard so we can view the details of what happened during our run. Now the Client Runs tab on our Chef Automate server shows all four of the machines we've configured, and we can inspect any individual one to see the steps Chef took during its last run. That wraps things up for this video. We've really only scratched the surface of what Chef is capable of. So for more, check out Learn Chef Rally, and in particular, the Infrastructure Automation Track to learn more about how you can use Chef to configure your estate. And be sure to check out our next video, where we'll go more in-depth on detecting and correcting issues with Chef Workstation and making use of some of the profiles and cookbooks available on the Chef Supermarket to jumpstart our automation. Catch you next time.